Okay, let's create a new game. Wait, what system is this? The Devil? Version 666? Oh, this doesn't seem to be good. Well, let's go ahead and launch. Wait, just one location? I wonder what this is. Oh no! Uh, okay, better relaunch. Try that again. There's got to be another save location in here somewhere. Oh, jeez. Okay. Let's try something else. Simple work! Simple work! Hi guys, what's up? Today I'm going to explain the basics of how save locations work, show you how to fix your broken save locations, and give you a trick for making totally new custom save locations without having to physically get there first. To get started, you need to understand how save locations are stored in-game. Each game you create has a totally unique set of save locations that are specific to that game. Anytime you create a new game, you start off with just the default save locations, but I'll show you how to copy over save locations from game to game later. To start off, it's important to understand the three types of save locations and what they mean. First, there are ground locations, which you can identify because the altitude says ground instead of an actual value. The ground location is defined by the planet, latitude, longitude, and AGL, or above ground level, values. This type is special because as the planet rotates around its axis, the save location will remain stuck to that particular planetary position. In order to create a save location of this type, your craft needs to have virtually zero velocity and be grounded. The most common issue that arises when trying to create a ground save location, especially when using landing legs, is that your craft will drift or bounce across the surface after landing. This often results in a different type of save location, which is very different from the ground location. Which brings us to the other two types of save locations, air and orbital. When you're looking at these in-game, they may look pretty similar to a ground type, except that for air, the AGL will have an actual value, and for orbital, the latitude and longitude values will always be zero. To understand these types of saves, you'll need to take a look at the XML file that defines these locations. At this point, I'm going to highly recommend you watch my video about XML editing on mobile, even if you're not a mobile user. You can find that video by clicking the link at the top of the screen. In order to find the save location XML file, you'll need to look in the user data file, then game states. Within the game states folder, you'll see subfolders corresponding to each of your saved games. If you have a lot of save games, it may be difficult to find the one you want. A quick trick to finding your current save game is to look at the settings file in the root folder of the game. From here, look for the game state ID value near the beginning of the file. Remember this, then go back to the user data game states folder and find the matching game states. Once you open this folder, you should see an XML file called launch locations. Now open this in your XML editing software of choice and you'll see all of the saved locations that you've created within that game. As you look through this file, you'll see examples of the different types of saves. Here's an example of a ground save location. The type is actually called surface locked ground and you'll see the values for latitude, longitude, AGL, and heading. Now, the heading was not displayed by the in-game user interface, but you can modify it here if you don't like the way your craft is positioned when you load. A great example of this is if you save a desired base location on another planet, but when you load the base, it's not facing the way that you want. Who knows, maybe you want some nice south-facing windows to avoid direct sunlight. Just remember, the heading here does not correspond directly with how your pilot or chip are oriented and has more to do with how your craft is oriented relative to the little blue arrow in the designer screen. To get this right, you'll probably need to play around a little. Next, let's look at an air type save location. It's very similar to a ground type, except that it also has velocity and heading vectors defined. Know that this save type can only be created on planets with atmospheres. 
I'll explain the velocity and heading vectors more when I describe the orbital type. I generally don't recommend using this type of save location when you can avoid it, except in cases where you are directly over a desired save location, but you'll have trouble directly reaching the ground. Lastly, there's the orbital type save location. This type is much more complex. Instead of dictating latitude and longitude, this type instead has orbital position and velocity. Each of these variables has three values, meaning they are state vectors defined in PCI or planet-centered inertial coordinates. Without going too deeply into how PCI coordinates work, just know that these coordinates are in the same universe spatial position no matter where the planet is in its rotation cycle. Velocity is also defined in terms of PCI coordinates. Together, these two state vectors can completely define an orbital profile. Lastly, you have AGL and heading. Honestly, AGL doesn't seem to actually do anything for an orbital type save location other than provide a value for the end game user interface to show. Heading is a four part vector and while it's difficult to confirm this for sure, I believe it's a unit quaternion vector, which is basically just a fancy but more computationally efficient way to describe the craft's rotation and direction in space. I would not recommend messing with this unless you have a PhD in mathematics, which I do not. Okay, back to what we were talking about. At this point, you should have a basic understanding of how save locations work and how they are defined in the XML files and also how to find the correct XML file. Now I'm going to show you how to fix a broken save location. Remember, when I say broken, I really mean a save location that you intended to be a ground location but was accidentally created as an air or orbit type because your craft was in motion. The potentially easiest way to fix the save is to spawn an invincible craft at your save location, wait for it to come to complete rest, then redo your save location. But maybe no matter what you do, your spawn craft drifts away from the desired location, or maybe a lot of time has passed in game before you realize that your save location was orbital and not ground, and the planet has completely rotated to a different position. Or possibly, you just don't like the name of the save point. You've probably noticed that you can't edit the name of the save in game. Well, in order to convert an orbital type to a ground type, you have to at least know the latitude and longitude of the desired location. Unfortunately, I really don't know of a straightforward way to retrieve these values without some sort of VISI, but thankfully the VISI is really easy to code. On screen here, I have the VISI code block you can use to snag the latitude and longitude of your craft, display them, and also log them simultaneously. I'll pause here for a second in case you want to take a snapshot. All you have to do from here is load your craft at the orbital save location, record the latitude and longitude values, and replace the XML code with those values. Air type saves are even easier because they already come with the latitude and longitude values and all you just need to do is remove the velocity and change the AGL. If you're nervous about doing any of this, just copy an existing ground save location and edit the latitude and longitude values directly. If you run into the problem that the planet has rotated significantly since you created the save location, it will likely be a much more manual process of trial and error to rediscover your desired save location, but hopefully you still have a craft there that you can load to recover your latitude and longitude values. At this point, I'll show you how I edited that messed up orbital location I created earlier.
Now you can see that when I load at that save point, the craft enters directly on the ground and not dropping toward the ground. Alright, now that you know how to fix saves, that brings us to the last, and in my opinion, best perk about understanding how save locations work. That is, creating totally new save locations without having to visit that point. One possible use for this is obviously to create locations on planets that are difficult to get to physically. However, the most fun use for this that I've found is a form of location roulette, where I generate random latitude and longitude coordinates on a given planet in order to discover new and interesting locations. This is ridiculously easy to do. You just input any set of random coordinates, making sure the type is set to surface locked ground. As I showed you before, now that you understand how the XML files work, you can easily just copy a save location from one game and edit it into the next game that you want to have. So for instance, if you're starting a new game from scratch, rather than having to recreate all of your save points manually, you can just copy them over from the XML file from your other save game that you prefer. Or, hey, look, you download some sandbox from someone that has a cool location that you really like on a planet. Well, great, you can take that from the XML file, copy it into your game, and you can create an ultimate set of save locations. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you and enhanced your understanding of the awesome Simple Rockets game. Remember, if you enjoy my content, leave a like and a comment. I make this stuff because it's fun for me, but I also want to make content that the community appreciates. Now, sit back and enjoy a slideshow of the random locations that I've generated directly in XML.